before she passed away, God bless her soul, <laughs> she had found this mo this book at a tag sale and uh, gave it to me because she knew that you know, I would find yeah. it interesting. And, okay, well, so thanks, thanks for calling. You're welcome. Good night. 520-333-4578 is the number. 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill, this Lamb down the road here. Howdy. Uh, Prescott Bush uh, was sent uh, to, to Iraq in, the 19, in uh, 1918. Prescott and, uh, Bush was George Herbert Walker Bush's father. That's right. Uh, they, they've been messing with Iraq for almost 100 years now. Yep. And, uh, you know, in the 80, talking about the BCCI, you know, in 88, at Homestead Air Force Base, they found a C-130 cargo plane full of cocaine. Yeah, that's true. And that's, I mean, that's, that's uh, that's, that's on public record, too. I don't know, uh, I remember seeing the pictures of it. Mm hmm But, uh, you know, the Bush has been, uh, they've been over there trying to get some of that, uh, for the last, for 80 years now. Well, they've got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they got it, and we're getting it. And they're going to get a lot more, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, man. Well, well, Price of oil is already going up. That's right. And, uh, and, uh, we're going to pay for it, too, but. <laughs> yep. All right, good talking to you. Thanks for calling. Bye. 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Mr. Cooper. How you doing? I'm listening to your show, and I uh, appreciate this. Um uh, just went out to the website, barnesandnoble.com, and I'm able to order the book, Fortune and Son, George W. Bush, and the Making of an American President in Stock, J.H. Hatfield, paperback. That's it. Our price, fourteen ninety five. so the book is out there for your listeners. Second question I have, I noticed that ever since uh, the two towers went down and the unfortunate loss of all those lives over there, that the U.N. during the Gulf War came out with so many resolutions condemning the uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, and we haven't heard a peep out of them as far as any resolutions like condemning or, you know, from the Joint Security Council, that type of thing. I was wondering what your opinion is on that. What, what, what difference does it make who they condemn? You know, you can listen to what they say so you get purple in the face and die. It's what they do that matters, and they don't ever do anything. Now, here's the kicker. I came in tonight after a hard day's work, and I put on Channel 2 News, and there is one of the talking heads on uh, <laughs> CBS talking about how unprepared we are for an anthrax attack. And I'm like, well, you know, they're just I mean, trying to... the military, I mean, the last thing you tell the PF populace is that, you know, how vulnerable you are to another attack. Unless you want them to get all scared and weepy and, you know, wimpy and, uh, exactly. and, and pulling the covers up over their head at night so that they will accept any draconian, uh, tyrannical, uh, despotic measures that you want to impose upon them in the name of their own security. And for my wrestling fans, I, you know, for, you know, forgive me for saying this, but <coughs> a lot of people in this country are saying, well, maybe we shouldn't watch them Tomahawks. Maybe we shouldn't go in there because there might be a suitcase of God knows what coming back in this country. I mean, it's talk, it's talk about mind conditioning. Yeah, it's unbelievable what's and, going on. And so, what, so what if there is? Uh, w would you rather be free and have a chance to live a good life and be able to deal with things, or would you rather have them scare you into enslaving your own self and living your whole life in in fear as a slave? The thing that frightens me, sir, <coughs> is that it seems to be working. Working rather. Well, okay. I've always because they put that onto the boot tube, and these people are like, whoa, let's pull these flags back in. Well, well, maybe we don't want to attack these countries. Well, you know, maybe the backlash. Let's go back to Nintendo and all that other stuff. I mean, like, you know, they've got us, like, you know, hearts and minds. I think we absolutely should identify who did this, and we should identify who financed them, and we should identify who helped them and trained them, and we should identify which political uh, process has, uh, has encouraged them, and we should go in and get these people, bring them back, and... Try them in a court of law, and if they're found guilty, uh, you know, let them be sentenced to whatever they're sentenced to. Correct. And my mindset is follow the money. You know, it's the money end of it. I mean, like people are short selling stocks. They believe that it was the, uh, you know, the uh, terrorist networks. Short yeah, it's always they believe instead of who did it. I'll tell you what, if somebody was short selling stocks, their name is on record. How yeah. come they're not telling us who it was? Exactly. How come nobody is screaming, hey, tell us these names. Don't tell us that somebody was doing it and maybe Osama bin Laden made a lot of money. Tell us 
exactly who it was because you know exactly who it was. Well, I don't think he was calling the stockbroker up doing this whole thing saying, hey, sell, you know. He had some other agents doing it for him. Doesn't so matter. Their names are on right. record. Their names are on record. They have to be. But we don't answer. We don't ask those questions. Well, most people are too stupid to even ask, you know, what street they live on, to tell you the truth. Sir, it's a pleasure, like, listening to your broadcast and keep up the work. Thanks for calling. Adios. 520-333-4578. Yeah, they know. They know exactly. You can't make a stock transaction or your agent can't make a stock transaction without somebody knowing exactly who did it. It's on record. Good evening. You're on the air. How you doing, Mr. Cooper? Robert, Tennessee. Hi, Robert. Uh, I'd just like to uh, just make a comment on, uh, you know, uh, this uh, New World Order crowd would have us to believe that, you know, uh, that they're after uh, Osama being Medine. But, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Secretary of Defense, Ron you he was on TV tonight, this evening, today, and uh, he was asked that question by one of the reporters. The reporters asked him, uh, sir, uh, if you take uh, Osama Ladeen out, now, would everything be over? And he said, he stated, no, that would only be the, the beginning. Yeah, I wonder why. If, if Osama bin Laden is responsible, how right. could that be? If he's the man. That's right. All the focus, no, the whole world is focused yeah. on, uh, that's our enemy. That's the world yeah. enemy. How, how, being so, so how can that be? If we get him and we get his network, how can that be that it wouldn't be over? That's right. So, you know, somebody say, no, I'm just looking at this. I'm saying, hey, you no, know, this, our government is lying to us again. Yeah, because they have no intention of making it stop. It, yeah. it, read the report from Iron Mountain. It's all explained in there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Everybody listening, get a copy of the report from Iron Mountain. It's in there. It tells you exactly what they're doing. People don't believe in the war on drugs anymore. They're calling for the legalization of drugs. And they got a lot of political clout behind them, so they got to have a new enemy now. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Bill Adam, I wanted to turn my radio off so I didn't blast it in your faces across the room. That's Paul from Brooklyn. I spoke to you a, while, a few times uh, several years back. But um, listen, I, I'm, I'm amazed. I can't believe what, what, what I'm hearing. I, I got a, I got a couple of questions for you. Um, in in this particular crisis and everything that's going on right now, in your opinion, do we stand behind what our government's doing? Uh, I mean, knowing knowing all of this, all this is happening, but yet knowing we're we're still in the midst of this horrific crisis. Depends upon if what they're doing is right or wrong. It is never proper to stand behind anybody if you know in your heart they're wrong. That's what Hitler's followers did, wasn't it? That's true. And didn't the Nuremberg trials prove that your responsibility is to refuse if you know it's wrong? Absolutely, because they held German officers who were supposedly following orders. Yeah, and they executed them too, didn't they? Yes, they You did. want to be executed if, if somebody comes over here and kicks our butt and decides you're a war criminal? <laughs> No, definitely not. And if you think nobody can kick our butt, I'm telling you right now, there's so many atomic weapons uh, loose in the world that that could happen very easily. Look what happened when one plane crashed into the Pentagon and two planes crashed into the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center. Washington, D.C. was in a panic. True. Nobody knew where anybody was. Everything was evacuated with no plan. I'm telling you right now, for about six hours, the government was working, but it wasn't working uh, with the people who were supposed to be working. It was working from underground command centers by people who nobody even knows anything about. Well, here's a real question that, that you definitely seem ideally suited to answer. Given the fact that now we're hearing all over the news that the Israeli Mossad supposedly warned us about all of this weeks before. And they did. Was, so did the Germans. So did the French. And then there was a guy in prison who actually specifically named the World Trade Center. Yeah, he made a phone call to the Secret Service and yeah, told so, them all about it. And, exactly. So the question that I want to ask you in response to all of that is, if the government, was the government really in shambles, or in your opinion, they pretty much know that this was going to happen and just kind of, you know, laid back and Some waited. people in the government knew. Most people didn't have a clue, just like everybody else. Amazing. But I just like Oklahoma City, they wanted it to happen. It gives them more power. 
Well, I, I was what I was gonna what, what I was gonna say was basically that regardless of whether or not they quote unquote wanted it to happen, it definitely suits the purposes. I mean, you know, I'm sitting I'm sitting here in Brooklyn and I, I'm watching F-16s fly over my head while I'm. While I'm